Okay, praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our class. And what is the course name? Yes, it's Minister's Foundation. And welcome to the class on Minister's Foundation. Uh, in this course, we'll um, uh, be studying three of APC publication. So the first one we'll be studying is uh, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Uh, welcome to our online students as well, and also um, welcome to our e-learning students. So all of our in-person students, if you can grab a book of uh, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life will help because we are going to be studying this um, APC publication. For those of you who are online, I have um, uh, posted the PDF copy of this book in the... Um, classroom page you can access it from there and i hope all of you read the welcome note and the course introduction if you haven't read it will be nice if you could do so please later on and um, also for our e-learning students the textbook is there um, in the e-learning page so you can access it from there okay so uh, the, we'll be studying three apc publications like i said fulfilling god's purpose for your life receiving God's guidance and um, a code of honor, okay? Um, I will be uh, giving you a lot of extra notes and information uh, during the class lecture. So it'll be good if you can take down notes, which is not there in the publication, you can take it down. And all of that will also come in your assessments. Okay, usually people have said, I don't know if you've already heard it, I'm very characterized for my assessments. They say my assessments is very hard. It's not hard. It's basically, if you listen to my lectures, take down notes, all that I speak in the lecture and all that is there in the course notes comes in the assessment. Okay, so don't say that, uh, you know, the assessments are hard. It's basically I have incorporated the extra information that I'm giving to you uh, during the lectures and also what is there in the course notes. So I'm saying that ahead of time so you can take down notes and follow through. Okay, now we're going to be studying three uh, APC publications. So um, the speed will be a little fast. I will do a quite an in-depth study of uh, this book or this publication, um, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. Receiving God's guidance is kind of a repetition um, of what we are studying in Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life. So I will do an in-depth study when we are studying um, this book, Fulfilling God's Purpose, and when we are doing receiving God's guidance, when we're studying receiving God's guidance for, for our lives, I will just basically refer back to what I have already said in my lectures during um, Fulfilling God's Purpose for Your Life, okay? And then we'll move on to Code of Honor. So are you all ready for the class? Yes, okay? Let's pause for a word of prayer. Okay, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you, God, that you have a plan and a purpose for each one of our lives. And your plan and your purpose for our lives are good, perfect, and something that gives us a hope and a future. And we thank you, God, that the things that you planned for us, you planned even before the foundations of the world, that you had us in your mind, Father, that you have great things in store for us because you are a good God. You are our Abba, Father. You are loving God. You are gracious. You are merciful, God. And we thank you that you have lavished all of your uh, spiritual blessings on us. And we are your inheritors, God. And we want to bless you. We thank you and we worship you. Father, we thank you that your will for our lives is not a mystery. We thank you that we can know your good, pleasing, and your perfect will. And even as we learn how to do it, we pray that each one of us, God, will um, tap into knowing your will and plan and your purpose, and that we will be able to position ourselves so that we can receive from you and we can do, God, all that you have envisioned for us. We thank you for your grace and your enabling and your empowerment. We bless you. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 
So does God have a plan and a purpose for our lives? Yes. How many of you agree? How many of you say no? It's okay to say no, doesn't matter. How many of you agree and say God has a plan and purpose for your life? All of you put up your hands. Okay. So yes, God has a plan and a purpose for our lives, but we need to know God's plan. We need to know God's purpose for our life. We need to catch God's dream for our life. And there is no greater purpose than to live out God's purpose for our life. And there is no greater satisfaction than to fulfill God's purpose for our lives. And there is no greater adventure than to walk according to his purpose. Amen. I'll repeat that again. There is no greater purpose than to live God's purpose for our life. There is no greater satisfaction than to fulfill God's purpose for our life. And there is no greater adventure than to walk according to his purpose. Okay. So is fulfilling God's purpose for our life, is it uh, easy? Is it easy? It's quite challenging, okay? How many of you all say it's easy? <laughs> no hands up, okay? Yes, it's not uh, going to be easy. It can be challenging. It can be um, difficult. But we know that it's God's plan for our lives. And when God has something that is planned for our lives, those, those plans is good, yes or no? Because he's a good God, yes? And it is perfect for our lives because he's a God of perfection. He does everything in perfection and in order, okay? So the first thing we are going to establish is that the fact is that, you know, God helps us to understand his plan, his purpose that he has for each one of us. Have you heard people say God's plan for my life is a mystery? Is something that I don't know? Sometimes we feel that we have to twist God's hand to know his plan and purpose. Sometimes we feel that, hey, we can't know God's plan for our lives. Okay. So does God reveal his plan and purpose for our lives? Does God reveal his plan and purpose for our lives? Yeah. Yes, he does. Okay. So we'll establish the fact first that you know will help us understand that god has a purpose god has a plan for each one of us okay now we need to understand something about god that god is a god of plan he's a god of purpose he's a god of design and he's a god of objectives okay so god is a god of plan no you uh, yeah thank you God is a God of plan, of design, of purpose, and of objectives. Now, God does not wake up the morning. Actually, he doesn't sleep, okay? So he doesn't need to wake up. But in our understanding, God does not wake up in the morning and say, okay, let me decide what I'm going to do today. Where do I think the sun should rise up from? Which side the sun should rise up from? God is not like that, right? He doesn't work arbitrarily he doesn't work at random right what is the meaning of arbitrarily he doesn't do anything randomly by chance chalta hai kuch karenge no we'll do anything it's okay no it doesn't work like that god does not work by chance he doesn't work randomly he doesn't work uh, arbitrarily okay how do we know that how do we know that god does not work by chance or random or arbitrarily. How? Okay, um, in Genesis, you need to take the mic so that you can speak. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we see God created everything. Yes. When we look at creation, what do we see? When we look at creation, what do we see? When we look at creation, what do we see? What do we find? God has created heaven. God has created it, yes. That's why it's called God's creation. But when we look at God's creation, what do we understand? Yeah, there is order, right? There is perfection, 
right? This one season moves into another season. The sun rises, the sun sets, the moon comes up, the stars are there, the seasons that comes, you know, it's not like God says, okay, there was very bad summer in Bangalore, so I'm going to send winter, you know, <laughs> before the, the monsoons, I'm going to send winter. No, he doesn't do things arbitrarily, he doesn't do things at random. Everything in creation has a specific order, there is a specific um, uh, perfection to it, there is a design that is there. Even if you look at your own bodies, right, your, the human body, all of us have the, you know, perfect human bodies, right? Our eyes are not floating somewhere else, one day eye is not here, one day my eye is not here, one day my eye is not here, right? Or your heart is not floating around in your body, everything is so perfect everything is so in 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 order right so look, let's look at what scripture says psalms chapter 33 verse 11 can somebody read that please the, psalms chapter 33 verse 11 the counsel of lord stands forever the plan of his heart to all generations yes it says here that god has plans in his heart okay and his plans or his counsels that are in his heart last for how long? Forever, for all generations. Okay. So the Bible says that the counsel of the Lord, you know, stands forever. The plans of his heart stands forever and is for all generation. Okay. So God has plans in his heart. Amen. Yes. Some of us don't like to plan. We just like to do things as and when it comes, right? But I got good news for you. And the good news is that God has plans for everything. Plans for your life, plans for this world, plans for the generations to come. So he's got plans. Look at what Acts chapter 15 verse 18 says. No to God from eternity are all his works. Amen. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Elkanah, can you please mute your mic so that it will be easy for others? Elkanah, can you kindly mute your mic, please? Thank you. Okay. So Acts 15, 18 says, known to God from eternity are all his works. That means what? What does it mean? He knows things from the beginning, okay? He knows things ahead of time. Even before he created the world, even before the foundations of the world, God knows everything that is going to happen. He knows the end from the beginning, the beginning from the to the end. He knows everything, right? So even when Adam and Eve sinned, did God know that they were going to sin? Yes. Did he know that? Yes. Did he also have the plan of redemption in place? Or did he say when Adam and Eve sinned, oh, uh oh, what do we do now? Adam and Eve have sinned. Did he already have a plan of redemption in place? Yes. How do we know that? Because the Bible says that even before the foundation of the world, the Lamb of God was slain. Okay, so even before Adam and Eve had sinned, in God's heart and mind, the plan of redemption was already a done thing, completed thing. Okay, so everything that is happening in history is not a surprise to God. Everything that is going to happen in the future, happen in the past, everything is known to God even before he created the world right so known to god are everything even before the foundations of the world so even before the foundation of the world god knows that each one of you will be in all people's church bible college sitting here in the first year in the year 2000 or 2024 so he knows everything right he's planned everything so even before the foundations of the world everything was a done completed thing in the heart and in the mind of god right so he knows everything. He knows your beginning. He knows your end. He knows your destination. He knows when you are going to start your journey. He also knows how you should get there. 
So everything that God has planned, he knows and he has already planned that in your lives and also in history. Okay. So the Bible tells us that, uh, you know, and reveals to us that God has, you know, uh, there are two kind of plans that God has for each one of us. Do you know what is that? What are the two kind of plans God has? Two broad divisions. Is it plans to give you hope in the future? Uh, we can't hear the in-person students. Can somebody do something to increase the mic volume or something like that? Sorry, Shahani Chapman, we couldn't hear you. Um, I would say can you say? Yeah. Please go ahead. I was saying, is it plans to give you in terms of a hope in the future? Thank you. Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. Okay, send, can somebody call Abhinas and then he can help us? Right. Okay. So the Bible reveals to us that God, um, you know, has master plan. Okay or it's called his eternal plan. God has a master plan. And God has, you know, um, uh, it's also called as a general plan or purpose. And God has a specific plan and purpose for our lives. So he has a master plan and he has a specific plan. Okay. Yes, he has plans for life on earth and in heaven. Yes, thank you. So can one of our online students uh, speak, unmute your mics and speak so we can check here, please? Praise Anyone? the Lord. Yeah, we Praise can hear you. Lord. Thank you, Susanna. Thank you, Susanna. Yeah. Okay. So um, God has a general or a master plan, and he has a specific plan for each one of our lives. What do you think is his master plan? Yes, thank you. Salvation is his uh, general plan or his master plan. His master plan is that all men be, all, all women and men be saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And what is a specific plan? What is a specific plan? Purpose for individuals. Yes. Uh, his purposes for individuals. Yes, his plan and purpose for each of us as individuals. Okay, look at what Ephesians chapter 1 verses 9 to 12. It talks about God's uh, master plan or his eternal purpose. Can somebody who's not read can read please? Having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he proposed in himself. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times he might gather together in all one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which which are on earth in him. <clears throat> in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Amen. So here's it's saying that there is a good pleasure, okay? So saying that, you know, um, having made known to us the mystery of his will, okay? So which means that God's will for our lives or God's will for the entire mankind is not a mystery. We may not know it, so it seems like a mystery, but God reveals it to us. And that's why he says, you know, he's made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. What is the meaning of according to his good pleasure? It means that something that he is really happy about. So God is excited about the plans he has for your life. God is excited about the plans that he has for mankind. It's, it's his good pleasure means something that he's really happy about, something that he's really excited about. And it says something that he has purposed in himself, meaning that God does not discuss with others and discuss the plans that he has for mankind 
or for the generations or for you and me. It is something that he has purpose in him, self. Okay, so he doesn't call a committee of uh, angels and says, okay, what do we do about Divya's life? What do we do about Kushbu's life? No, something that God plans in himself. Okay, and what plans he has are plans that are for our good pleasure. Okay, so we look, it'll be good if you all will look at your notes, follow through. You can also, um, you know, uh, make a little side notes if you want. So you are with me in the class. Okay. So it's something that uh, he didn't discuss uh, with anybody else. Okay, He just decided in himself. And it's something that he was pleased about and something that he has purposed. Okay? And it says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, that means in the right time, that means in the proper time, you know, that he will gather all things in Christ, both that are in heaven and that are on the earth. Okay. So what is God going to do? God is going to gather all the people on heaven and on the earth. He's going to gather them all together. All who have believed in him, all who have received salvation. Okay. So that is what he's going to do. He's going to gather all of them that are in heaven and on earth. Okay. Uh, so uh, read Ephesians chapter, okay, the verse 11 of the same verse, um, it says that in him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him, okay? So according to the purpose of God, you know, we have been predestined according to the purpose of of God who works all things according to the counsel of his will. That we who have trusted in Jesus should be for the praise of his glory. So all that God has planned and decided is something that he has predestined. What is the meaning of predestined? What's the meaning of predestined? Something that he has preordained or prearranged even before time, something that he has purposed in himself, that he would work all things according to the counsel of his will for those who have trusted in him. So if you have trusted in Jesus, if you have accepted him as his Lord and Savior, then each one of you have to have this assurance that God's plan and purpose for your life is good. And that is something that he has, according to his good plan and purpose, he has planned it in himself and whatever God has planned for your life is good. Amen? Okay? So that when you go through and fulfill his plan for your life, you will it will result in you praising God and giving him the glory. Okay? So twice in this passage, in verses 9 to 11, Paul says, that God has a God has a purpose, yes, according to the purpose of Him. So two times it's saying God has a purpose, and it's also saying according to the purpose of Him. So whatever happens in your life, not some things that you do out of your own will, you can't blame God for that, but when you are following God's will and plan for your life, you are doing something that is according to what He has purpose for your life. Amen. That's why it says here in this verse, according to the purpose of him. And it says that God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Can somebody else read Ephesians chapter 3 verse 11, please? According to the eternal purpose, which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So here we see that God has a master plan. God has an eternal purpose which he has executed and is continuing to execute on the earth. Okay. So God has an eternal plan. He has an eternal purpose. And that eternal plan and purpose is something that he is executing on this earth. So what is God's eternal plan and purpose? What is God's eternal plan and purpose? Salvation to all mankind. Okay. Um, can somebody please read 1st Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 and 4, please? For 
for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. So here, what is it saying? Just look at the verses. It's so amazing, God's word, right? It's so powerful. It says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior. What is good and acceptable before God? What is good and acceptable before God? Hello, everyone. What is God's good, acceptable in the sight of God? Look at verse 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. We are on page number 2. That all men be saved and come. What's happening at the back, please? That all men be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Okay. So what is God's good, acceptable in his sight? God's good, accept, something that is good and acceptable in his sight is that all he desires all men to be saved and come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ or come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay. So this is God's master plan. This is his eternal purpose that he wants everyone to be saved. So if you are praying for somebody in your family, praying for their salvation, you can, you know, say this verse. You say, God, this is your good, pleasing, and your perfect will, that you want all men to be saved. And all men or all women includes people in my family. And you can say their names and say, God, I want them to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Okay? And so we see that God is unfolding and God is carrying out this master plan or this eternal plan that he has a purpose in the earth today. Okay. So not only does God has a master plan or an eternal plan, he also has a specific plan. That means he has a specific plan for each one of us that he has created. Okay. Look at uh, Psalms chapter 139 verse 16. Can somebody read that, please? And also you can read the Message Bible. Your eyes. Like, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Like an open book. Your yeah, eyes who was talk. reading on the online student? Anyone the online student was reading? Could hear Your, some uh, lady's voice. Your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed, and in your book they were they all were written. The days fashioned for me when as yet there were none of them. Yeah, can you please read the message Bible as well? Thank you. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life are all prepared before. I'd ever lived one day. Amen. So powerful and so beautiful. Yes. Yeah. What does it say? That God's eyes, you know, my life, our life is like an open book before God. It's like this open book. It's open before God. And he has seen me grow from conception in my mother's womb to the time I was born. And all the stages of my life was spread out before him. And all the days of my life are prepared when? When was all the days of our life prepared? Even before you even took your first breath. Even before you lived one minute on this earth, one second on this earth. Even before that, God has plans for you. His life is just right there before him right so that is such an assurance is it not an assurance for each one of us sometimes we think god has forgotten us sometimes we think hey what is god doing with my life i see obstacles i see hindrances i don't see anything moving i don't see anything happening i think god is angry with me he does not love me he does not care for me no but here this is what the psalmist says it says that our life is before 
God. He knows everything. He has planned everything in our lives, even before we have lived even one day. And we know that God is a good God, right? So whatever he plans has to be good. So if there's something that is not good happening in your life, something that is um, uh, not right that is happening in your life, you can't say that it's God doing it because God cannot do something that is not good. It's maybe you have stepped out of God's plan. Maybe you have gone away from him. Maybe you have, you know, indulging in sin or in wrong uh, lifestyles. And that is why you open the door for the enemy to attack and for the elements of this world to engage with you and to bring difficulties and hardships. But you need to know that when you go through difficulties and challenges, it's not from God because God has good plans. If you see things in your life not moving, if you see things in your life not happening, if you see things, uh, plans in your life not coming to fruition, not happening in the way that it has to go, you know that, you know, somewhere you have gone away from God. And so you can come back to God. And when we come back to God, God, you know, begins to fulfill his plan and purpose for our lives. Okay. So each stage of our life, God has prepared even before we lived out one minute, one second, or one day in our lives. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing to know that our lives is in this hands of a powerful God who is omnipotent, who is omniscient, who knows everything, and who is a good God and who is a faithful God. Okay? So God has a blueprint for your life. Amen? Tell your neighbor God has a blueprint for your life. Or those of you online, you can say God has a blueprint for my life. What is the meaning of God has a blueprint for your life? Huh? What does it mean God has a blueprint for your life? What is a blueprint? God has already designed our lives. Okay? He's already finished designing our lives. Now, when you're going to build a building, you go to the architect, right? And the architect gives you a, a blueprint. He gives you a plan. Uh, where are the staircase, where are the windows, where should be the bedroom, where should be the dining. All of that is a blueprint. It gives you the plan of the entire house. And based on that plan, you begin the construction work. So God has a blueprint of your life before him. Okay, it's just for us to understand. It's not like he has so many blueprints. It's just like God knows the blueprint for our lives. Okay, and um, he has a dream for your life. Okay, so God did not uh, create you just because you have to be born on this earth. God created you with a plan. He created you with a purpose and he has designed you. He has wired you. He has structured you in such a way that you can fulfill his plan and purpose for your life. Amen. So now God is not going to say, hey, Take, this is your blueprint, you know. This is my plan for your life. Take it, Tara Baba, I see you. No, it doesn't say that, you know. It says that God has designed us in such a way. He's created us in such a way. He's made us or wired us or structured us in such a way that we can fulfill his plan and his purpose. Amen? Amen? Can I hear a louder amen to that? Amen? Amen. Okay, that's just too loud. <laughs> okay, so look at what Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. Can somebody read that, please? Now that I have already attained or I am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that, for which Christ Jesus have also laid hold of me. Amen. So what is Paul saying here? Paul is saying that I'm pressing on and he's pressing on to do what? What is Paul pressing on? Look at your Bibles, please, on that verse. What is Paul pressing on? Yes, to lay hold of what Jesus Christ has laid hold of him. So Paul is saying, hey, 
I'm pressing on to take hold, to catch on what is God's plan and purpose for my life. What Jesus Christ has already planned and purpose, I'm catching on to that. I'm taking hold of uh, that. Okay. So there is a purpose, a uh, that for which Christ has called you or created you. Okay. And that should also be our response, like Apostle Paul, that we are saying, God, I'm here. And I want to take hold of what you have taken hold of me. I want to take hold of what you have planned and purposed for my life. I want to take hold of it and I want to run with it. And I know, God, you are going to give me the grace and the strength. Look at what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 says. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. It says we are, who are we? Yeah, we are God's workmanship. Okay. So that means there is something that God is doing in us. So what is God doing in us? What is God doing in us? What does it say here? Good works. Yes, thank you. He is, what is he doing in us? He's doing his good works. And when has he planned these good works? Beforehand. Yes, he has planned these good works beforehand. And what should we do? We should walk in them. Amen. So he has planned good works. Okay. That he has planned even beforehand. And he plans that we should walk in them. So God has good plans for you that he has planned for your life. Now, these are some important verses. So if some people come to you and they are depressed, distressed, disappointed, that, you know, uh, things are not happening in their life, um, everything has come to a standstill, everything that is negative is happening in their lives they don't see god's furtherance move you can use these verses to encourage them or some of you here feel that there is hopelessness hopelessness in your life you are discouraged because you have tried various things nothing has happened finally you are trying to come to bible college and you're saying okay let me see if this works okay you need to tell yourself hey god has you know, good plans for me, good works that he has prepared beforehand. And you need to go to God and say, God, when you have good works planned for me, even beforehand, and you are a God who reveals it to me, reveal it to me. Reveal what are your good works so that I can walk in them, so that I can fulfill them. Because God, I know that you have created me to fulfill your good works. Amen? Can we do that? Yes. Okay. So, you know, God has planned everything for our lives. God has planned places that he wants you to go. God has planned people that he wants you to meet. God has planned the lives that he wants you to touch. And he has already planned things that he wants you to do. So God has a plan and a purpose for your life. I repeat that again. God has places he wants you to go. God has people he wants you to meet. God has lives he wants you to touch. And he has things that he wants you to do. And God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Amen. So living our life is very easy, very simple. All you need to do is just ask God what is his plan for your life. And all you need to do is just walk in that plan. Okay. You don't have to go to any prophet. You don't have to run to any great man or woman of God. You don't have to... Look at your horoscope or astrology, all that is not God pleasing. Your horoscopes and astrology is not going to reveal your plan and purpose, but you need to go to God. Okay. So God does not only speak to prophets, He does not only speak to pastors, He also speaks to each one of us. How do we know that? How do we know that? It's not only priests and pastors and prophets, but God can speak to each one of you. How do we know that? Through his word, yes. Which is a significant moment in history when we know that we have access before the throne of God. 
when Jesus died on the cross, what happened? Yes, when Jesus died on the cross, what happened in the temple? The cut and turn. Yes, the veil of the temple that separated the holy of holies from the most holy was cut into two. So what does it signify? We can go to the There's Father. No yes, you have direct access. You can directly go to the Father. You don't have to go through any high priest. You don't have to go through any priest. Each one of us have a direct access to God. And you don't even have to make a sacrifice. Right? Before even when God's presence is to come on the tabernacle, they had to make a sacrifice. But here, Jesus made that full, sufficient, and perfect sacrifice because of us, Hebrew says, we can therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness and with confidence, knowing that we can receive grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. Amen? So you have the confidence, you have that boldness to just go and ask God, God, what is your plan for my life? What is your plan for this season of my life? What is the plan for the next season of my life? Because God works in seasons. He will reveal to you what is the next season of your life. Why will he reveal what is the next season of your life? So that you can plan and prepare for the next season of your life. So God's plan for you is very simple. All you need to do is just ask him and he will reveal it to you. Okay, look at what uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9 says. Can somebody read that please? Who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Amen. So what has God saved us and called us for? What has he saved us and called us for? Look at your verse. What is it? What has God called us? Yes, it's a holy calling, but what is that holy calling and what has he saved us for? Yes, for his own plan and his own purpose. He's not called us for eternal retirement, right? Some of us think that, hey, I am born again. I've accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I'm also baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm going to heaven. I'll just sit down and do nothing. No, we are not called for eternal retirement. God has saved us and called us according to his purpose. Or he has saved us and called us for his purpose. Okay. Tell your neighbor you have been called for a purpose. Or you online students, you can say God has called me for a purpose. So God, God has, has called, called us for, God has called us for a specific purpose. And when he's called us for a specific purpose, there's something amazing that he does. He's given us the grace. What is the meaning of grace? What's the meaning of grace? Favor? One more chance. <laughs> That's nice. Undeserved favorness from God. Unmerited favor from God. Yes. Thank you. Chiru Grace. Huh? His glory. Okay. Ability. Yes. In the New Testament, whenever we see the word grace, it means divine empowerment divine favor divine character three things divine enablement or divine empowerment or it can mean divine favor or it can mean divine character so when god has given us a plan and purpose he has given us divine enablement or empowerment he empowers us he enables us to do what he has called us to do. He also gives us divine favor. Basically, divine character means the grace to become Christ-like in everything that we do. Okay. So God is not trying to figure out what to do with your life. He's already done that. He's already has a plan and a purpose. He's given you the grace, um, which is even given before the beginning of time. You know, he's given you the grace and the purpose to fulfill the plan and the purpose he has for your life and God's plan for our lives is always good. Amen to that. 
Okay. Uh, before we look at Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, Elkanah has a question. Can God speak his mind towards someone through a servant of God? Yes, he can. God speaks um, to someone else. He can speak to someone else. But what I'm encouraging all of us is, no, God can speak to us. We can go to God. We can hear from God. And yes, God can speak his mind that he has towards others uh, through his servants. Yes. So we look at that. God, we look at a verse in scripture that says God's plan for us is good. Anyone knows which verse is that? It's a very famous scripture passage. Verse. Yes, thank you, Jiru. It's Je Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. What does it say? For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you and future and a hope. Amen. So God says, I know the plans I have towards you, says the Lord. Plans for good and not for evil. Plans for peace and not for evil. In some uh, translation, it says good and not for evil. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Okay. So everyone can repeat after me. God's plan for me is good. Is good. And not for evil. And not for evil. And God's plan for me. God's plan for me. Has. Has. A hope. Hope. And a good future. And a good future. Amen? Amen. Do you believe that? Yes. Okay. So God says don't get scared of his plan and his purpose for your, his, for your life. Because the plan and the purpose that he has has a guarantee. That his plan and purpose for your life is good. You know, when you buy things, you look for guarantee, right? Warranty. So what is the warranty that we have that God's plan for our life is good? Jeremiah chapter 9, 29, verse 11. That is the guarantee. Okay. Okay. We'll stop here and we'll continue after the break. Thank you. <laughs>